So as we discussed in class, syntax is essentially the study of sentences, how they're formed, how they're structured. In order to set the groundwork for thinking about the nature of the structure of sentences, we need to take into consideration two basic concepts. The first of these is linear order, and the second of these is what we'll call hierarchical structure. Within the concept of hierarchical structure, we're going to need to understand another concept that we're going to talk about here, which is constituency. Okay, so linear order. What do we mean by linear order? If we think about it, what linear order refers to can be seen quite clearly in the following contrast between two sentences. Man bites dog and dog bites man. These two obviously don't mean the same thing. And they don't mean the same thing because even though both of these sentences use the same three words, what gives them their different interpretations is the linear order of these three. When man precedes bites and dog follows bites, the dog is the thing that gets bitten. When dog precedes bites and man follows bites, the man or man is the thing that gets bitten by the dog. The big point here is that the linear order of these three elements is what determines the difference in meaning between these two sentences. Okay, so that's kind of the easy concept. The next thing we want to turn to is the question of understanding the hierarchical structure of sentences. But in order to really understand the hierarchical structure of sentences, we need to think first about another concept. And that concept is constituency and what we mean by that is we want to think of sentences as more than a linear string of words. We want to be able to think of sentences as comprised of one or more words that can be grouped into, into larger units, right, that function as single units within the sentence. So the best way to kind of understand this is in terms of what we call constituent structure, okay? So the first thing we're going to do here in this little presentation is motivate, that is justify why we think that more than one word can serve at another level in our sentence as a single unit. That is to say, groups of words can function as single units that are combined with other groups of words, constituents combined with constituents within the structure of a sentence. Let's think about this in terms of um, a fairly simple example that we can walk through. Okay, in this example, the point of the example that we're going to look at is to show how we can test for whether different words, com combinations of words, are acting at the same time as single entities within the larger sentence. Let's think about the following very simple sentence. Something like, I don't know, the dogs chased the cats. We know that this sentence has five words in it, the dogs chased the cats. But what we want to do here is we want to try to make the argument that the dogs at some level is a single unit and that the cats at some level in our sentence is also a single unit. 
How can we do this? Well, the first thing we can do is consider a bunch of other sentences in which we use pronouns and show that they can replace the dogs as a unit or the cats as a unit. In this case, they chase the cats, where the single pronoun they replaces the two words, the dog. The dogs chased them, where the pronoun them replaces the two words, the cats. Or even they chased them, where they replaces the dog's subject and them replaces the cat's object. Why is this an important thing to demonstrate? It seems in a sense kind of obvious, but if we think about it, what's the pronoun doing? People tend to say things like, pronouns replace nouns. Well, in effect, they don't. What the pronoun is doing is it's replaced the dog or the dogs and the cats. That is, it's replaced multiple words, not the single noun dogs or the single noun cats. This gives us proof that those two words in this particular example, the dogs and the cats, are at some other level, that is, within the syntax, both two separate words, but at the same time, a single unit. We're, we're going to name units like this noun phrases, that is, the particular kind of constituent that is represented here by the dogs and the cats are constituents that we label noun phrases. That's because dogs is the head of the dogs. It's a noun, so it's a noun phrase. And cats is the head of the cats. Cats is a noun, so it's the head of a noun phrase. Okay? So, one other thing that's interesting to note here is that when we replace the dogs with they, we can't just replace dogs with they. So as I pointed out, pronouns don't replace nouns, they replace noun phrases. That's why it sounds very odd to say, the they chased the cats. Because they replacing dogs doesn't allow us to have a grammatical sentence here it needs to replace the whole noun phrase. And in this case, the whole noun phrase contains the article, the. So if we try to say the they chased the cats, we've improperly treated dogs alone here as the whole noun phrase, which it isn't. Okay, it could be, right? You could say dogs chase cats, they chase cats. But in this particular sentence, the they doesn't work because you need to replace the dogs with they. Okay, so again, what we've replaced here are what we're going to call noun phrases. Because in this particular case, pronouns replace noun phrases. They serve as what we can call a constituency test for the noun phrase. So what's the big picture? Just the takeaway from this brief presentation. The big picture is this. One... Linear order matters, right? We need to understand when we think about syntax that precedence and following, what comes before and what comes after something, is part of what it is to know the syntax of your language. In English, we know that subjects come first, verbs follow in the canonical order of English, and objects follow verbs. Linear order is visible to everybody, so it's really very intuitive to understand. What's a little bit less intuitive is the concept of hierarchical structure within sentences. And in order to even begin to understand the hierarchical structure of sentences, we first need to understand the concept of constituent, which is this notion that multiple words can combine within a given sentence to act as a single unit. And we've seen two examples of that of the same kind of single unit in the small demonstration we did here where the cats 
and the dogs are acting as single unit noun phrases within the larger sentence, the dogs chased the cats. We're going to call these constituents, we're going to name these constituents with different kinds of names, such as noun phrase, verb phrase, prepositional phrase, and so forth. And that's what we're going to kind of look at as we move forward with our uh, review of how sentence structure works. <laughs>